Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for attending the new Sage 300 stock take module developed by AutoSimply. This is an SDK-based application, as all of the AutoSimply solutions are, so it's fully integrated and an exclusive solution for the Sage 300 product line. Our presenter this morning is Terence Eng, who's the technical director from AutoSimply. He'll be walking you through a short PowerPoint presentation and then showing you the application in action. If you have any questions, I'd invite you to use the chat. That's part of GoToMeeting, and we will respond to those questions either during the presentation or towards the end. Thanks again for taking the time to be on the webinar with us today. We appreciate your ongoing support. And now I'll pass it over to Terence to begin the presentation. All right. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you, Robert. Uh, before anything else, uh, we would like to uh, thank you guys for giving us this opportunity to present our product. I'm actually very, very happy to be uh, communicating with you guys, uh, even though it's virtually only. And uh, we're excited to show to you uh, our new product called AutoSimply Stop Take, or AT for short. So, uh, I've actually prepared a, a very short slide. So most of you probably know that I'm not really very good at creating PowerPoint slides. So I'd rather show you the product itself. So let's get started with the uh, slide. Uh, how come it's not there? Oh, sorry. So uh, let me just move back. All right. So. Let's get started with uh, main benefits. So uh, what do we intend to offer our clients and uh, our partner community as well? So obviously with a stock take module, what we want to do is greatly improve the stock taking operations of the client to uh, for them to have a better inventory control. Uh, from a partner as well as a customer point of view, the major advantage of our solution is that it is fast and simple to deploy. Later on, uh, what I'll do is I'll start from scratch. I'll show you how little setup is involved. You can pretty much plug and play uh, the stock take module and uh, of course the investment cost uh, because it's just an add-on module on top of IC. It's very low and if we can really improve the inventory control of the client, the, the returns are very much easily uh, measurable for the uh, client. Now, let's just get started with identifying first, what are the uh, limitations that we have within Sage 300? So uh, most of you guys will be very familiar already with the IC physical inventory routine of Sage. And uh, the main gap that we are actually trying to address with this solution is the support for lock and serial number counting. So uh, people would be aware that right now in Sage, uh, the client is only able to input the total counted quantity at the end of a physical count. So that means if the client has lots or serials, somehow they are keeping track of what they have counted on a per lot per serial basis, and they are just allowed by Sage to input the variance at the end of the counting uh, run. So that's the major limitation of Sage, and we want to address that, obviously. The second one is uh, in Sage, we know that the uh, physical inventory is posted by location. So uh, the tendency is because we are doing a, a physical count, uh, transactions are affected. Uh, you have to wait until the whole, uh, the whole count is completed before the, whole, the location is posted. So we basically took care of that with worksheets. And then the third limitation is there is no, or there's no good audit trail for stock count. We see that there's a variance of 10 or 20 units, but we don't know how it happened or how was the counting done, who counted where, what time. So all of that information could be answered by the stock take module. Now, let me then uh, quickly highlight what are the main features of the stock break module? So first, uh, as I briefly uh, introduced early on, 
we have enhanced the stock take worksheets. So worksheets are a lot more flexible. Uh, I could create uh, multiple worksheets for the same location containing different items if I really wanted to. We also provided for history by count user. Uh, we also have a validation routine prior to posting. So that means we can actually tell uh, the user what would fail and what would be ignored during the uh, posting of the physical count uh, reconciliation. We will not be forcing fixes to be done uh, prior to the posting of the reconciliation uh, if the client wants to. And of course, uh, one of the main reasons why we did this was because uh, we know that uh, our barcode stock count was uh, limited by IC physical inventory. So by, by creating the stock take module, we are now able to offer a more robust uh, stock count solution that works with our barcode uh, module. So let me just quickly uh, go into a bit more detail here. So uh, with the AT or stock taking uh, worksheets, we also now support cycle counting. So because Sage was limited to doing it by location, that's why there's really not a good cycle count routine within Sage. I know, of course, you could create optional fields and try to play around with that. But still, uh, with AT, the client is now able to actually calculate ABC automatically, whether it's by value, by usage, whether it's global or specific location. We can then do batch assignments by ABC category. That means we actually are encouraging the client to do stock counts maybe on a daily basis rather than doing it once a year or once a quarter. So the best or the uh, good practice would be to count A items, maybe weekly B items, maybe monthly C items, maybe quarterly, something like that. That would be easily done with stock tag. And then of course, uh, with our new worksheets, we have extracted all of the lot and serial details. So we would know which lots would have uh, what starting quantity and how much would be the variance per lot as well as serial. And then uh, before I go into a demo, the last thing I just wanted to highlight uh, in the slide is that we have put in history. So we do know uh, who. So we created a AT count user that is linked to the Sage and barcode users. And we are even able to assign security uh, by location for the users. So counter one maybe can only do counts for location one and so on and so forth. So that would be uh, part of the uh, AT history. And then when we post a stock take, uh, you can imagine that it would generate the IC adjustments to make the corrections or reconciliation with Sage. But at the same time, we actually archive it into our tables. So that means the client can actually go back and look at the stock counts that was posted last year to figure out what could have gone wrong. And obviously, we have the archive history, and we can also clear that just to make space if we need to. So that's just to sort of like give you a uh, big overview of what the stock take module is all about. At this point, let me now go into the product itself. So uh, this is just a uh, Sage 300 main menu. Everybody here is familiar with it. And actually, I'm just using the uh, standard sample database of Sage. So this is Sam Inc. You see that there's no uh, auto simply module just yet. What I want to do is actually show it to you from the very, very beginning. So it's a very simple, a very simple solution relative to uh, manufacturing. So everybody in, in the room would have no difficulty implementing this. So after the installation, as you can probably uh, imagine, the only thing we need to do is activate auto simply stock tech. Uh, notice that uh, we are using now version 6.8. My Sage actually is uh, 6.7, 2020, but our 6.8 version, which is of course our first version, would be compatible backwards up to 2014. 
if we really wanted to. So if you have clients running on 2014, that won't be a problem. So this is now me just activating the advanced stop take module. It's activated already. And uh, now notice that we don't actually create the separate module anymore. So we just put it under inventory control. Obviously, we're just replacing the physical inventory routine. Uh, do note that everything in the physical inventory would function in a normal way. So if for whatever reason, the client still wants to use it for certain scenarios, that's perfectly fine. So for the advanced, for the auto simply stop check, notice now that this is uh, the module itself. Uh, just to highlight to you how simple it is, I only need to define one thing, and that's the user master. So we created a separate user master within stock take module. So let's just say I create now counter one. Since I want to close transactions using the Sage desktop, then I need to link it to a user in Sage. So this is now the Sage user ID that I want to use. For the location tab, this is now where I could set up which location he can post transactions for. So let's say this is now just location one and two. So that's basically the user master for stop tech. And that is the only setup file that is required. Everything else is optional. So at this point in time, I'm good to go. The client can already use the product. Now, before I do a transaction, I just want to uh, highlight that even though we have a user master for stock tech, do note that we don't have user licenses. So that means uh, if the client wants to just use the Sage desktop, no barcoding, that's possible. That means they would consume a land pack. They could input the uh, stock count using the normal desktop screens. Uh, that would work. All right. Now let me just close this uh, user master. And now we go now back to the stock take module. The first step, as you can probably imagine, is generating a worksheet. So uh, let me just complete uh, a complete cycle first, and then I'll go back and answer any questions that you might have. So let me just generate a worksheet. Notice now that I could filter by location, by item, by category, by picking sequence. And then later on, I'll show you how I would be using the cycle count groups to generate a worksheet. But for now, just to keep it simple, let's just say that I want to have a worksheet uh, encompassing location one to location three just for our favorite items. So let's say A1900, A11030, the desktop uh, desk lamp, and the calculator, I think. So here I could also put in the full quantity on hand and generate. So this is now the auto assembly stock pay worksheet. Notice that we have a stock pay batch or uh, worksheet number. And uh, before I answer the questions, let me just quickly show you the inventory worksheet. And here you can see I have now stop take one. So the major advantage of this is that, as I mentioned earlier, it's not location based. I could post uh, a worksheet independent of another worksheet and uh, the two worksheets could be uh, working on the same location. And then uh, let me just quickly show you the history. So right now, if I wanted to input, let's say for item with an 103 item, so I'm filtering against 103. This is our favorite item here, the desk lamp. This is the starting counts. Let's say I, for whatever reason, I counted 135, this is 265, and maybe this is just 40. 
Notice now that when I inputted the count for location three, it actually prevents me from saving it because I don't have access rights to that. So that means somebody else should be doing that count. I can save, and this is now uh, updating my worksheet. If I wanted to check how we arrived at 135, I can open the history, and this is actually telling me with a timestamp uh, when, who, from what count to what count. So this is now the history for this worksheet for that item. All right. So at this point, let me just look at the questions. Okay, so Stan was asking uh, if users will only be doing the count, uh, can I have uh, unlimited counters? Y yes, uh, just note that the, uh, if I'm using Sage to input my count, then of course I would be limited to how many people can input using the land packs. Uh, but our objective is eventually to extend this to the barcode. So I could have uh, 20 counters using barcode sharing one Sage land pack, updating all of this history for me. So that's our goal. But uh, right now, I'm just showing you first the, uh, the, uh, the, the desktop edition, uh, if the client wants to just use desktop, all right? And then uh, I would show it to you later as well, but the counting and the posting is separate as well. So. Uh, I can give rights to the user to only be able to update the worksheet and then leave to somebody else to do the reconciliation later on. All right. And uh, Bonnie was asking, uh, does the master user have to be a different from a Sage user? Uh, it could be, yes, it could be the same user actually, but uh, the, the master user, uh, let me just open that screen again. So uh, the question a while ago was, can I actually share admin to different counters? Technically, it's possible. But then, of course, we actually only rely on this to log into Sage and be able to know which counter would be updated in the back end, who did it. Uh, if you're just using the desktop, it should not be the same. If I was using the barcode, then it doesn't really matter, right? So uh, that's, I guess, the, the most technical way of uh, answering that. If only desktop, I need this to be different to know who is the counter to be uh, linked to the history. If it was barcode, it doesn't really matter. And I'll show it to you later how I would link the uh, counter to the uh, user, all right? And then uh, can data be imported? Okay, this was asked by Jaime, and that is one of the limitations right now. So I'll go to that a bit later. And uh, you can probably imagine why we don't want to, to do it right now, and it's because of the history. So when we import, it might mess up the history, it might mess up my data here if they're not careful. So what we did to quickly answer Heine's question, we disabled it for now. But in PU1, which is just a, a few months out, that would be resolved by adding our own import routine to limit it to just this information here. So that was a, a, a very far looking ahead question for Heine. So uh, if that was clear, let me now go back to the uh, flow. So what we have just done a while ago was input the count using the inventory worksheet. Uh, the inquiry is just to check uh, if uh, there's if everything looks good. Eventually, the user would be going to post reconciliation. So let me just uh, close the screen here and then go to post reconciliation. I can then look for that uh, worksheet. This is just to populate the reconciliation. I can see what was uh, the data in that worksheet. I can filter for anything that has a variance. And 
the most important thing, we added a verify function. So if everything looks good, then they would, this would be black. If we detect any issue, so for example, negative counts, uh, serial numbers existing at two different places, maybe uh, a lock count that would result to negative, then the system would highlight it here. And if we choose to continue, it would post, but we would uh, skip or disregard those item lines. So at this point, I would post, and this is actually the reconciliation already. So notice that we have generated adjustment number one, and this is now in Sage IC transaction, adjustment entry, and uh, you would see here adjustment number one. And this is actually what we just did. So you have it, the record, which worksheet, adjustment number, the details. We, of course, would follow the account that is set up in uh, the IC account sets. And we actually have under our reporting. So if I go now to stop click reports, archive history, this is now part of archive. If it was a uh, pre-post, it would be under history. After I post, it automatically goes to archive history. It will be stored in a separate table to free up space and make the system a bit faster. So here, let's say right now I only have uh, one stock pick worksheet. And let's say I just want to limit it to one item. Then this would, this would be how the archive history would look like. So uh, I'm just printing out the report. So uh, yeah, it would look something like this. Okay. So you have here the worksheet, the item. You can see pretty much what the history previously showed us. You have the timestamp who, timestamp when, who, which uh, account user, and what he did. All right. Uh, are you adding? So Jaime asked, uh, are we adding the uh, SH number in the adjustment? Uh, I'm not sure what is SH. If you mean the stock take number, uh, we don't use the stock take uh, worksheet number. We actually just use the IC adjustment numbering, but we have indicated there what is the source. So let me just go back to that screen to quickly answer that question. So that would be IC transaction adjustment. And uh, this was the question a while ago. So this is system generated from Surge. The stock tick number is in the description. All right. So let me now go back and do some more examples here. So let me just quickly go back and generate a worksheet. Uh, I can use uh, the same set of data. Now let's just limit it to location one. So this is now generating my uh, second worksheet. And this time I just want to highlight how it looks like with lots and serials. So this is now uh, worksheet number two. And uh, everybody here knows which item would have a lot or a serial number. So this is now the calculator item. If let's say my actual count was uh, 100, uh, let's say 99, then I could go back and see which lot was actually counted. So obviously if I'm using barcode, maybe it would be better to start off with, uh, with no default quantities. I would be then scanning each of this lot, inputting the quantity counted per lot. So uh, that's how typically what we would expect people to do. But you can see here that I'm identifying which lot has the variance. And then let's say for this one, answering machine, if it's a serial number, it's lot track, it's pretty much the same. And then this is now just saving and the history is there. So for the history, of course, we're just tracking the, the count, not the lot history, so that's a bit too complicated, but uh, it would be there. So this is uh, actually one of the major 
uh, limitation of sage that we wanted to we wanted to resolve. All right. So if if everything is clear, then I'll move on to actually answer the question from Richard. So he was asking about uh, generating uh, worksheets in cycles. So let's move on to that topic, which is cycle content. So early on, we said that the only thing that is required is the user master. If we wanted to do cycle content, then we have to go into the options table and then define what is my ABC. So of course, the concept of cycle counting is that we want to assign all of the items uh, into certain groups of cycle groups. So uh, A would be uh, either the, uh, the most used item or the most valuable item within a stock. So it could be, let's say that A item is 70, B is 20. So this is actually percentile first. So in terms of value, top 70 is A, DEX 20 is B, 10 remaining is C. Now, if I wanted to do it by material usage, then maybe this is 60, uh, 10, 30. So this is now how I would want to rank my items. So that's saving it. And then of course, we need to define cycle groups. So this is just the cycle count group maintenance, uh, nothing fancy. So let's say uh, this is typically people would do it like this. So A1, so this is my A1 uh, group. And then maybe uh, B1, this is my B1 group and so on and so forth. So I could create any number of uh, account groups. And then under the uh, periodic processing, this is now where we have the item cycle count calculation. So I could do it across all locations or I could be uh, location specific. I could do a mixture of value and uh, usage ranking. So we did this basically just to speed up the process. So of course we can imagine that some of our clients might have a very, very big databases, maybe like 100,000 items with uh, 100 locations then it might take uh, quite a while to do it. So they can try to minimize the, the run using this filter. But at the end of the day, what we have just done is that if I now go into the item cycle count group maintenance, I would be able to say that for A1103, for location one, this is actually the ranking that the system has assigned. So value-based uh, for this, for, for the global, for all locations I mean, it's A2. But value-based for only location one, it actually fell to B2. And then from a usage ranking, it's A1 for all locations, but it's only C1 specific to this location. So this could be uh, the basis of the uh, user to designate which group they should belong to. So they can do it, of course, one by one. Uh, if the client prefers, you can always import it into this table. But we also provided for a cycle count group assignment. So all they have to do is uh, indicate from what rank to what rank they want to assign to a specific uh, item group. So that's essentially what the cycle count routine would be doing. But uh, uh, just to have uh, one particular record. So let's say A1103, I'll just put it into A1 for whatever reason. And then let's say uh, for A1105 for location one, this is also A1 for our purpose today. And then if I go back now to the generate worksheet, uh, this is now the user generating it for location one for cycle count group. A1. So this is now how we would do it and then just generate. So now I have a stock tape number three. And uh, if I go back to inventory worksheet, right now we have three worksheets. And this is the one. Uh, let's just for example, let's just say for example, 
is A1 items that I want to count maybe on a daily basis. So that's how we would uh, apply the cycle counting within Sage 300. So going back to the question of Richard early on, so uh, the A, B, C ranking actually determines the schedule for the client, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, or quarterly. Uh, this is how we would generate it. It's not technically scheduled. So that means uh, right now we don't have a uh, routine which makes use of a task scheduler of Windows to generate the worksheets. So we don't do that just yet. But uh, this is how they would do it on a periodic basis, okay? Uh, looking at the questions again, uh, uh, Pierre was asking, is the history, does the history keep changes at the lot serial level? Uh, no, unfortunately, we don't do it because it's just a, a bit too complicated. So the history right now only looks at it at the item level. So the plus minus level. And of course, when we post the reconciliation, it would then reflect at the lot or serial lot. So it, it's not uh, tracking history by lot or serial. All right. Uh, okay, so Jaime was asking uh, if if there is a log of what selection was done, was used to uh, to generate the worksheet. Uh, right now, we don't actually, so we did not uh, think of uh, doing that. Uh, but I would imagine people should put it as a description or reference or comments. So uh, for those information, you could see that we provided those three fields there. We also actually put in a comment, a comment for each item line with uh, detail as well as header optional fields. So between those reference fields, you can pretty much do all of the uh, commenting that you would want. Um, uh, okay, so Jaime was asking, how do we uh, assign the uh, ABC ranking uh, using the cycle count result? So let me just step back and quickly show that again. So for the uh, worksheet, uh, wait, sorry, for the setup, cycle count group. So this is just how we define the cycle count group under the periodic process. Uh, you can see here that uh, for every item, location combination, there is a ranking. So it's A, uh, how many zeros did we use? Two, four, six. So uh, seven zeros, right? Three, oh, no, six zeros. Okay, so to assign it automatically, I can use the uh, item cycle count assignment and then just uh, assign, whether it's by value or by usage or by item, by location. So maybe from location one to location one, for any item which is ranked from A, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, to A, one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's say up to uh, 10. So this is uh, how we rank it at the moment. I think I, I have linked another zero. So anything from A1 to A10, I want it to belong to uh, A01. So this numbering here is for all items. So uh, if you have, 10,000 items, then you would expect maybe A items to be from one to maybe, uh, let's just say 1,000. And then from 1,001 to 5,000 could be your B item. And uh, from 5,001 to uh, 10,000 is actually your C item. So since I don't know how to assign, uh, we just let you filter from what range to what range and then update the ranking. So this is how we would do it by batch. But of course, nothing is stopping you from looking at the results of the cycle count uh, ranking calculation and do all of this in Excel and then just import it into the tables. So uh, the assignment routine is just a way to do it by batch, all right? So uh, just to reiterate, uh, to answer Jaime's question, uh maybe if I open it. So uh I, I cannot show it by this screen, but
but in, in the tables at the back end, each item location combination would be ranked across these four fields. So there would be an A1, A2, A3, A4. There would be a B1, B2, B3, B4. And you just filter based on that. OK? So uh, the last thing that you see here is just the archive clearing. So once I post, and, uh, uh, and for whatever reason, let's say after a year, I just want to clear all of the archives so that my database doesn't get too big. This is how you would do it. Just put the cut of date, let's say end of the year process, and that deletes all of the history. So the history table, unlike ICHIST, moves to the archive table, and then the archive table can be cleared if you want to. Okay. So uh, Doug was asking, uh, if you want to have multiple people work on the cycle count, you want to assign people to certain items, would you just create different groups or do you create one group and assign people to select the items? Mm. So right now the security of the system is by location only. So we don't actually assign items to people uh, right now. And uh, if we really want to have multiple people work on a worksheet, uh, ideally, you would be using barcode to do it. So it might be good to generate multiple worksheets and then just assign it to the person. But uh, assuming that they they work on the same location, it doesn't really prevent them from inputting other items. So there's no item level security at the moment. All right. So with that, let me just jump onto the barcoding side of it. So, oh wait. Okay, so let me just quickly answer Jaime's question. Uh, what is, uh, is what are the rankings? How are they generated? Is it on um, the TCA? Okay, so just to quickly uh, answer Jaime's question. So the ranking is based on value or usage. So value would be uh, the quantity basically the total cost in IC location detail, if you want to be very technical about it. So what is the, what is the proportion of uh, item across all of the items? And you're getting the top 70 in terms of value. So that's one way of looking at it. Or I'm getting the top 60 based on usage. So anything that is basically going out would be a usage in uh, physical inventory. So that's how I would rank. So top 70 is A, uh, the next 20 percentile is B, the last 10 percentile is C. That's what it means. All right? So it's not sale related. It's actually uh, value or usage. That's how a uh, cycle count ABC is done normally. But even if they don't want to use how we rank it, for whatever reason, the client is still free to just maintain the cycle count group and import uh, the cycle count classification using this table. Oh, sorry, using uh, uh, that table under the period. This one, uh, sorry, this one. Back to cycle count too. So they can just import here if they prefer their own method. Now, with that, let me just jump into the barcode side. So again, I'll take the opportunity uh, for those of you who are not familiar with barcode, uh, I can quickly show you how easy it is as well to deploy. So what I would just do is go to data activation. Obviously, before this, the barcode module has to be installed. And uh, now I'm just activating it. So notice that this is now barcode 6A or 2021. So that means Right now, the stock take module is available, but it's initially at the desktop only. The barcode 68 module will be released by month end. So by month end, then you have the support for stock pick as well as the, the new enhancements for barcode 68. So this is now just me activating. Done. Going now into the uh, inventory barcode module, uh, the same thing, I need to put in a barcode user. So let's say this is user 
warehouse user number one. And now this is where I link the counter. So uh, for, uh, I think, uh, Doug's question a while ago, if I have a lot of user and I want them to input it into the counts as history, then this is how I should be doing it. I should use barcode, link it to the barcode user. All right. So this is just user number one. And because we have security, I can then assign security to user number one. And then uh, this is, of course, an unnecessary step for Barco. I need to define the web service configuration. But uh, that's pretty much it. And I could now move in to my barcode module. So this is now the barcode app running on Windows 10. But uh, the solution actually uh, works even with Android and iOS. So if the stock taker wants to use tablets, wants to use their phones, it's more than possible to do. Whether it's an Android phone or an Apple phone, uh, it's possible. If they want to use a laptop desktop with a barcode gun, that's also possible. So right now, that's exactly what I'm showing you. This barcode app is running just on my laptop. And if I want to scan, I only have to put in a barcode gun and it would work. So this is now AutoSymphy barcode. And uh, the only requirement for AT to work with barcode is that they have the IC basic module. So a lot of our barcode clients right now, they actually have uh, IC basic. And when they go into icbasics.com, if they have the stock pick module uh, activated, they would now have this option. So atstock.com and icstock.com. So this is the old way of doing it, physical inventory. This is now the new way. And here I can then look for my worksheet. So let's say worksheet number three, and this is now the user content for A1103, how many? So let's say 88. And then for uh, A1105, how many? Let's say 99. So this is how they would input a count. And uh, eventually they would just post. So ideally they would be using the scanners. They would be scanning the labels. If the item was lock shot, then that after they scan the item, they would have to scan the lot as well and input the quantity for the lot. So the end result here is that they have already updated the worksheet. And if I go now to the IC uh, AT module worksheet, you would now see that for uh, stock count worksheet number three, we have 88 and 99. So that's how we want people to input uh, uh, the, lot, the counts, actually. If I go into history, then I should see that this is C1, which is counter one, and he, he actually used the barcode to input that count. So that's uh, barcode using AP. But uh, for those of you who are familiar with barcode, you would notice that you have two more buttons at the bottom. So this is actually where we're going. So uh, when we release barcode 6.8 month end, you now have this download ATS.com function there. The idea is we want to be able to go offline. So imagine uh, clients maybe that are consigning goods to their customers. And uh, when I do a physical count, it involves going out of the uh, warehouse and counting at the client side, maybe. So to do that, of course, if they can be online while outside the office, that's perfect. But if, let's say, for whatever reason, they don't have access to their uh, Sage server, then uh, with the barcode AT feature, we can actually download the information on the device. They can then move on to select the same worksheet, input their counts. So let's say for A1103, they counted 12 more. 
whatever reason. But this one, I just counted one. This is now my account. I could save it. This is now saving it to the local device. And then when I'm ready, so maybe when I go back to the hotel or when I go back to the office, I can then upload my worksheet number three. And this is now actually either overriding or adding to my stock comp. So this posting here actually made its way back to the screen. And this is now showing us 100 each. And the history, of course, is showing that there was an initial 88 count and there was 12 more, resulting to a total of 100. All right. So that's how the barcode uh, AT module would work. So the uh, right now, this is just uh, for demo purposes. I have structured it this way. But uh, when we release it, what you can expect is the user would download the AT count. And then when they log out, we would actually provide them a offline login option. So obviously, if they're offline, they cannot connect to the web service to, uh, to check against uh, uh, the server settings. So they would be able to do an offline login where the only thing they could do is input the counts for offline worksheets and eventually uh, upload when they are online again. All right. So that's barcode.com. Now, uh, as I said, we don't charge anything separate on the barcode side. If they have the AT module, then uh, the AT module, and if they have the IC basic module in barcode, they already have the AT barcode functionality. So for, for the clients that we have who are using IC basic, this is something that uh, that would be appealing to them, I think, All right? Another thing that I just want to quickly highlight while we still have time today is a, if I go back to the inventory barcode, user master, notice how we now have what we call the stock count user. So this is actually a cheaper barcode user license. So in the past, every barcode user, uh, whether he's only doing stock count or whether he's doing PO receipts or OE shipments, it's the same user license. But uh, moving forward, because we want to encourage more stock count users to use the barcode module, we now offer a separate stock count user license. And uh, if this is activated, the effect would be, if I go now to user security, the only thing that this user can do is stock count. So this is a, a cheaper user license on the barcode. So I could now have the option in 6A to have 10 barcode users that can do everything and maybe 20 count users that can only do counting. Together, I can have 30 concurrent users in Sage doing all of this, sharing only one LAN path. That's how we are extending Sage 300. All right. So the last question I have here is from Trenton. Uh, if the same item is counted by two different counters at the same location, is there an addition or, ah, okay. So this one is uh, quite easy to demonstrate. So the quick answer is it actually would uh, just add to it. So uh, just using the worksheets, all we have to do is create uh, another user. So AT setup, uh, user master, let's create a counter two, for example. And uh, this is, uh, well, I might have to set up. Uh, so something like this, it would be a separate user. And uh, when he goes in as others, uh, when he goes into the worksheet, when he updates this quantity, it would just update this quantity and reflect under the history as C2. So for the same item in the same worksheet for the same location, then it's in the same history file. It would overwrite. All right. And the last thing before I forget, uh, we also support units of measure. So I could actually insert a line for A1103 and say that this count was for dozen one. 
So this is now a separate line with a different initial function. All right. So uh, that's essentially a stock trade. And going back to my slide, I just have one more slide to go through. So just a quick uh, mention of what we are intending to do. So for the roadmap, uh, as I said early on, so the barcode section of uh, AT worksheets and offline stock tech, it's scheduled for end of this month. So it will be released together with barcode 6A. Uh, you can expect that. Uh, for the simplified import of worksheets, this is the question by Jaime early on. So we do know that it's a limitation at the moment. So it will be in PU1. We just need time to uh, address it. And then support for lot zero costing. We would do it in PU1 as well. What it means is right now, when we do a stop count, any variance, positive or negative, effectively it's just using the average. So what we want to do in the next PU is that if the item was lot costing, and the variance came from that lot, then the cost adjustment should be specific. So that's something that we're studying right now on how to do. And then the last question, and probably this will be the uh, most asked question for us moving forward, is bin tracking support. So right now, it's still not yet supporting bin tracking. We're looking into how to do that. So we'll probably have a meeting with our kid sometime soon. But uh, again, it's mainly because when we created this product, our uh, main objective was actually to address the uh, lots in Stockholm. All right. So uh, I just need to answer, I think, two more questions here. So Doug was saying, uh, do not, you so you do not recommend that you include counts in the worksheet that let the users identity collect the count. Um, I'm not sure I understood that question. Uh, okay. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. I think I know what you mean. So uh, you mean the when we generate the worksheet? Uh, so the generate worksheet default quantity on hand. I think that this is what Doug was asking. So I would only activate this button if I wanted to simplify the counting, right? So just like Sage. So if I want to have the default quantities of the lot of the serial numbers as well as the item, and I just want to input the variance. This is how you would do it. But if ideally I'm actually counting by lot by serial, then typically this won't be activated. And you want the barcode scanning to actually build up the, the counts of the lot, the serial numbers, and the item. That's I, I think that's what you were asking. And then lastly, the question from Jaime is how about if we have a barcode for a box of 24 each, two boxes are scanned and five each are scanned. So yes, so in this case, uh, the default worksheet would show you maybe the each because that would be the SKU, but you can then insert a line of two boxes and then update the quantity of each to five. Then you would get the exact same result. And uh, in relation to that question, if you go now to the reconciliation inquiry, uh, I think it was topic three that I did, you, uh, you would see here that the system would automatically uh, reconcile it. So for A1103, notice that the reconciliation is showing 112, but actually in the worksheet, it was, uh, I'll put it side by side. I think this was uh, Jaime's question. So for the same item, one dozen and 100 each is now resulting to 112. And this is how we would reconcile with Sage. So for the reconciliation, it's a bit similar to what Sage would do. So we compare the count versus the starting point versus what is currently on hand to determine what would be the adjustment we posted into IC. All right. So that's uh, essentially stock take module. I hope uh, everything was clear. Uh, Jaime was asking, do you need to create different UOM for each item? Uh, the, 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 the UOM is defined in the IC item still. Uh, if you want to count by dozen, then you have to insert it. But because the default worksheet will only be by SKU. 
So you would insert, if you want dozens, if your SKU is each, that would be the, uh, the limitation right here. All right. So that's uh, everything that I have prepared for, for today. Uh, anything else? Uh, anything you want to add, Robert? Ah, there's one more question from Heidi. Uh, when doing lot serial, how do you create the difference? It is basically what is the lot balance. So if the lot has 10 in Sage, but you only counted eight, then the system upon reconciliation would adapt to it. But uh, the difference now with Sage is that we are able to count by lot. So if you start from scratch, then you are counting for each lot of every item, uh, compiling a balance for each uh, batch. And if, it, if the item was serial track, then effectively you are counting every serial item. And of course, uh, it makes a lot of sense if you're using Markov to do that. Yes, uh, to Jaime's question, the IC adjustment will only show the difference, of course. It will be a quantity, uh, both both quantity increase uh, or both decrease depending on the volumes. Okay. Uh, if there is no other question, again, uh, thank you guys for joining our session today. I hope uh, you found the, the new product uh, very useful and uh, hopefully you would recommend it to your uh, clients. Uh, Jaime was asking, what if they scan lot serial? Uh, yes, that's possible. So if you scan a lot or a serial number that is not in Sage, then effectively you are inserting a new lot or a new serial number. And uh, the system upon uh, reconciliation would check if that lot or serial number is acceptable. So for example, the mask is correct. Uh, if the serial number does not exist in a different location, for example, if if all is good, then it will be posted. If something goes wrong, our default is we highlight it's wrong. And if you insist on posting, we just ignore that item totally and put it as part of the archive history as not posted and uh, let the user deal with it in IC adjustment if he wants to. All right. So again, thank you guys. If you have any questions, uh, just feel free to send me or Robert an email. We'd be happy to discuss it with you in more detail. Yes, let me add my thanks to everyone who attended today. If you would like a brochure on the new stock take module or an updated price list for Auto Simply effective February 2021 that includes pricing for the new stock take module, please just send us an email and we'll be happy to send you that information. Thanks very much for attending the webinar today. We appreciate your time very much. Have a great day.